This is my fight song. Take back my life song. Prove I'm a right song. What is your fight song? Uh, when I say fight song, what immediately comes to mind for most people is a song associated with a particular sports team. For most of us, when we hear the term fight song, we are automatically transported back to high school and college because most schools have fight songs. How many of you remember your school's fight song? I've adopted the, the, uh, the fight song from the movie Remember the Titans. <laughs> that's the one that I claim, because that's the only one I can remember. But fight songs are sung at games and at pep rallies as a way of infusing energy, spirit, and as the name suggests, fight into a team. A fight song gets a team ready and pumped for the game. It's supposed to build them up and motivate them to take on the opposition. Not only does a fight song serve to inspire a team, it also serves as a reminder to the team that they are not in this alone. They may be the ones in the game, they may be the ones on the field, but when the fans start to sing their fight song, it's a reminder to the team that there are some people behind them. Whether they win or lose, there are some people rooting for them, some people in the stands cheering for them they are not in this by themselves a good fight song also sends a strong message to the opponent you see a fight song will let the opposing team know who we are and what we are capable of the, the movie remember the Titans right well the fight song in there was um, everywhere we go people want to know who we are, so we tell them. Remember the dance? We are the Titans, the mighty, mighty Titans. Right? So, so that's the fight song. The fight song lets the opposing team know who we are. But I, when I think about fight song, I not only think about uh, team sports and boxing, I also when I hear fight song, I'm also reminded that during the 1950s and 60s, as blacks fought for civil rights in this country, music and singing played a critical role in that fight. Songs like We Shall Overcome and Oh Freedom gave voice to the civil rights movement. Yeah. During the marches, protests, and the sit-ins, as blacks were being hit, beaten, and spit on, they knew they couldn't fight back. So what did they do? They started to sing. They would sing songs like, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching into freedom land. These, these songs were their freedom songs. These songs were their fight songs. And these songs they sang to, in order to keep them focused on their fight for justice. In our text, we are introduced to King Jehoshaphat. At this point where we meet Jehoshaphat, we see that he has found himself overwhelmed and facing what seemed like an impossible situation. Uh, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Muonites have formed a combined army and they wanted to destroy the nation of Judah. Now Jehoshaphat and the people of God, they've won battles before. They've had military success before. But the truth is, this would be the biggest battle they've had to face. And looking at the situation, Jehoshaphat knew that his small army was incapable of fighting this battle alone. I don't know about you, but I know exactly what it feels like to be Jehoshaphat in this moment. I know what it's like to be overwhelmed by what feels like an impossible situation. I can only imagine, church, 
that's sitting in a doctor's office and hearing the words, you have cancer, can feel overwhelming. It can feel like an impossible situation. It can feel as if this is the biggest thing you've ever had to face. And it can feel as if you've been left to fight this battle alone. Whether it's cancer or whether it's some other adverse situation that you are facing, I have come to let you know today that you have everything you need. You have everything you need to fight in this battle. As a matter of fact, Jehoshaphat teaches us what we need to do when we find ourselves facing what seems like an impossible situation in our lives. The text tells us that when Jehoshaphat received word that this vast army had formed against him, the text says he was terrified. He called all of the people together and they stood before the Lord. The spirit of the Lord came upon the prophet Jehaziel and he said to Jehoshaphat, listen, do not be afraid. You are not going to have to fight in this battle. You see, this battle, Jehoshaphat, is not yours. This battle is God's. What do we do, church, when we are facing what feels like an impossible situation? First, take up your position. In other words, show up. I am convinced that battles are won and lost before the battle even begins. That's because every battle begins with a decision. Sometimes we look at what we are going through and we decide right off the bat that there is no way that we can survive this battle. We look at what we're going through and we decide before the battle even begins that there is no way that we can prevail. We allow fear and an intimidation to cause us to shrink back. But the prophet in our text is clear. You don't have to shrink back in the face of adversity. What you have to do is show up. I don't care what adversity you are facing, what battle you are fighting. Decide right here, right now. Decide today that you are going to show up. When you show up, it puts everyone on notice that what you are going through does not define you. When you show up, you make a statement that what you are going through doesn't have the final say. Let me bring it home. Cancer doesn't have the final say. Unemployment doesn't have the final say. Sickness and illness doesn't have the final say. People don't have the final say. You can show up to the battle when you know that there is no problem, no issue, no challenge, no disease, nothing on earth that can have the final say in your life. This is my fight song. Take back my life song. Prove I'm a 